life of your river flow. Father, we worship you tonight. We honor you. We bow before your throne. We acknowledge your presence in this place tonight. Spirit of the living God, thank you for coming. We're hungry, hungry for your word, hungry for your instructions tonight. And I yield myself completely over to your leading, asking that you think through my mind and speak through my lips. Let your people here on sight and those who are online be blessed. Instruct us in righteousness. Let us be more like Jesus. Help us, Lord, to conform to the image of the Son of God. To look more and more like Him tonight, which is the very essence of our Christianity. Be glorified, Spirit of the living God. Be glorified. Be glorified in this place. We silence the voice of the adversary. We say only the voice of the Holy Spirit will be heard. God's people will be blessed. And the name of the Lord shall be glorified. In Jesus' precious name, somebody shout amen. amen. Celebrate your king tonight. Celebrate him. Celebrate, 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 celebrate. What liberty we have in the spirit tonight. Hallelujah. And you may please be seated. God bless you. And I celebrate everyone that is online, that is hooked on to this service. YouTube, MixLR, Facebook Live and all the channels. The Lord bless you real good. God knows where you are, and God has a word for you tonight. Praise God. Amen. This is the very first Bible study of the year 2021. Praise God. The last time we had Bible study was in the year, the very old year 2020. That year was too eventful. But we thank God because God changed it not. The years may change, Seasons change, times change, people change, but we serve a God who never changes. He says, I'm the Lord and I change not. So we have hope and we can trust in him because it doesn't change. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Uh, uh, I want to share with us tonight what I've titled the secret power of fasting and prayer. Our corporate fast as the church begins tomorrow, Friday the 8th of January 2021 and goes on for 15 solid days. And I want us to do this with understanding. That's why I want to share what I want to share tonight so that none of us will lag behind, so that none of us will cut ourselves short from this blessing. The reason many don't fast is because they don't understand the blessings associated with fasting and praying. Many see it as some kind of psychological torment, some kind of uh, punishment from God or from their pastor, and we focus too much on what we are giving up. Oh, so I'm going to miss my grapes and my blackberries and my blueberries and my meat pies and my chocolates and all of that. We focus pretty much on the things that we're giving up. We don't focus on the things that we stand to gain. The promises of God. Whether you like it or not, you find fasting and prayer from the Old Testament to the New. So it is not an Old Testament phenomenon or practice like some people are preaching in the days and times in which we live. 
They said Jesus already fasted and all the apostles fasted and we don't need to fast, uh, you know, because they, they, already, they already did all the fasting and it's a period of grace. Yes, it's a dispensation of grace, I agree. Paul said, I labor more than they all because of the grace bestowed on me. You see, I am what I am by the grace of God. So even when you fast, you are fasting because of the grace of God. Because grace is made available to strengthen you when you fast. That's why you don't die when you fast. Amen. That's why you don't collapse when you fast. Now, your body is going to be weak, all right? No doubt about that. But also, it's a time of blessing. Because some of us have excess glucose stored in our bodies as glycogen, and we need to convert it back to glucose to use as energy. You don't need excess glucose. And even your digestive system is going to say thank you to you for at least taking a break from the regular munching and digesting and all of the mastication that we do. Praise God. So it's a time of blessing. It's a time of laying hold on the promises of God. It's a time to go to the next level with God. No one ever did exploits in the kingdom that didn't fast and pray. Check your scriptures. So it's not an Old Testament phenomenon. It's, a, it's part of the Christian lifestyle. It's part of what I call the Christian disciplines. We have Christian disciplines. Disciplines. Somebody say disciplines. Yeah, it's one of the disciplines of the Christian life. You see, what is bringing reproach to the Christian body today, to the body of Christ today, is the, the, the number of people who are Christians who lack discipline. And they, some of them are in uh, what I call conspicuous spaces. They are very popular. They are known on social media and all of that. So when they do mess up, it, it brings uh, a reproach to the body of Christ. And well, does God love them? Yes, he does. But what is it that is wrong with them? Many people lack discipline. Many Christians lack discipline. One of the disciplines that we are called to is the discipline of fasting and prayer. You don't have a choice about it. No, you don't. It's part of your discipline. If you go to the military school, they have their disciplines. They have regular exercises that you must engage in. A friend of mine told me years ago, he said when he was in the military school, whenever they were going to eat, they would take their mess pan. The mess pan was their food plate. It was a pan. We used to have it at home in my family too. My, my dad had some of them. They would take the mess pan and frog jump to the place where they would eat. Now, when they were done eating, they would frog jump back to their hostel. So sometimes they did boycott the meal <laughs> because it made no sense to them. They used a lot of energy to go get the food. And after eating the food, they used a lot of energy again to go back to their hostel, their bunks. So some of them just sometimes fasted. Now, but all of that training toughens them. If you have ever been to the military school, you don't like the training. Rigorous training. Sometimes you have to drag them through the mud, sometimes get them into the desert, beat them, put them in the fire, throw them in the fire, actually. They throw them in the fire. Do all sorts. Why? They are trying to toughen their skin. They are trying to toughen them from the inside. So when it is time for war, you don't run away. Because war is not the same as computer games. Can I have an amen to that? <laughs> war is war. I mean, life and death. So they prepare them. It's a rehearsal. The Christian life, we are called as Christian soldiers. And we ought to please the one who has enlisted us in his army. And if you're going to please him, listen, church, one of the things you would need to embrace will be the discipline of fasting and praying. Many, many Christians are not disciplined. We eat too much. We sleep too much. We talk too much. We eat too much. We sleep too much. We talk too much. We eat too much. We sleep too much. We talk too much. disciplines. So tonight I want to take us on a journey. I may take a little extra time, just bear with me. This is very key because right from tomorrow we will actually start fasting and some of you will receive strength to do a little extra. All right? Or you take a break when we're done and then a couple of days after you might have an inclination, you might have an impression in your spirit to wait on God one more day or two more days and that's fine. Fasting should be something that we do often. It shouldn't be something that is strange 
to us as Christians, especially in the Pentecostal circles. Praise God. Isaiah, now let me say this before we get into it, that fasting does not change God. This is very key because some people have faith in fasting. No, Jesus didn't say have faith in fasting. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty two, have faith in God. One translation says have the God kind of faith. Another translation says have the faith of God. He didn't say have faith in fasting because some people believe in their fasting. Like, ah, don't worry, that thing hasn't changed because hmm, I've not applied my fasting. By the time I apply my fasting, no, your faith should not be in the wisdom of men. 1 Corinthians 2, 5. Your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So every time, even when you fast, anchor it in the power of God. Anchor it in the presence of God. Anchor it in the presence of Jesus Christ. Can I have an amen? All right. Having said that, my anchor scripture tonight will be Isaiah chapter 58. And we are going to be looking at verses 1 to 14. There are many blessings that accompany fasting and prayer when it is properly done. Mark my words, when it is properly done. Because there are times that it is not properly done. But when it is properly done, there are blessings that accompany fasting and praying. Amen. Isaiah chapter 58, and we are going to be in verses 1 to 14, and then we'll look. Praise God, amen. Okay, sorry, I guess that might be from me. Isaiah 58, 1 to 14. It says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. To take delight in approaching to God. They like to approach me. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, that is why have we fasted, and thou seest not. You see, so these people fasted, but they didn't get results. And so they were asking questions. Wherefore have we fasted, and you didn't see. You didn't even look at us. And is that not true up till today? Times that people fast for something and pray and they don't seem to get results. So this was the condition of the children of Israel at this time. Listen. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul and thou takest no knowledge? Because they saw fasting as an affliction of the soul. They believed that when they fasted, they afflicted their soul. Now, God answering them said, Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. In the day of your fast, I am not your focus. You're fasting, but you're finding pleasure all over town. You are exacting all your labors. You are, you're expending all your energy, and there is no room for communion with me. There is no time to stay with me and hear my word. There is no time to ask me questions and let me talk to you. Like God said in Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, call on me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. You didn't make room for that. All right. Verse 4. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the feast of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. God is saying, if you want your voice to be heard on high, you are not going to be fasting as you are fasting now. In other words, one of the blessings, one of the secret powers of fasting is that it causes your voice to be heard on high. That God will hear your voice. Now, if you take a look at that in the natural, it looks practically impossible. 
Heaven is several miles, I don't know how many miles away from here. Maybe only God knows that. <laughs> because this sky above us is really not heaven. You will go into this sky and find another sky up there. And it's several miles from that one. Now, so how can I pray here? Oh God, can you hear me? I need money. God, I have a pain in my back. You need to take it away, Lord. We all have issues. We all have requests. We all have things that we're trusting God to do in our lives. God said, when you fast, ideally, your voice is supposed to be heard on high. He said, but if you keep fasting the way you are fasting this day, talking to these guys, God said, then your voice is not heard on high. Sorry, I have to change the microphone. I'm sorry about that. Go to the handheld. Hallelujah. This is switched off. Praise God. Amen. So one of the blessings is that our voice should be heard on high. Now let's go on quickly. Verse 5. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is this the kind of fast I've chosen? A day for you to afflict your soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush? That's some kind of weed. And to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? You're looking sad, looking morose. You're looking dispirited and disenchanted. You're looking like your joy is gone out of the window. Is that the fast I've chosen? Sayeth the Lord. Now in verse 6, God began to now tell them the kind of fast that he would pay attention to. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? One, to loose the bands of wickedness. God is now telling us the purpose of the fast. That when you fast, you are supposed to to loose the bands of wickedness. You might not be bound. You are free in Christ Jesus, but there are people around you that are bound. Now, you are supposed to set them free. You are supposed to stand in the place of authority and loose the bands of wickedness over your family. To loose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. When people carry heavy burdens, it is burdensome. <laughs> Heavy burdens are burdensome. There are situations in our lives that are burdensome. Situations that wear us out, that weigh us down. Situations that stress us. I don't like stress. I don't know about you, but I don't like anything stressing me. I don't like, I don't like anything trying to affect my mental health. I don't like anything getting me anxious and worried. No, don't stress me. Situations that stress you, those are the heavy burdens. And God is saying that when you fast, it is my joy, it is my will that you undo the heavy burdens. Not just in your life, but also in the lives of people around you. Undo the heavy burdens. Now, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. God said when you fast, is it not that you let the oppressed go free? Many people are oppressed that you know in your family, around you, in your neighborhood, in your place of work, in your school. They are oppressed and you look the other way. Every form of sickness, every form of disease is an oppression from the devil. COVID-19 is an oppression to this world. It is not a blessing from God. And God didn't send it to the world to teach us a lesson. Yes, there are lessons to learn from the pandemic and whatever it is. But God didn't send it to teach us a lesson because, the, you see, sickness and disease, they are not the teachers of the body of Christ. They are not the teachers of the children of God. The Holy Spirit is the teacher of God's children. Jesus said in John 16, 13, and in John 14 as well, that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I've said to you. 
So the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the church, not COVID-19. And how many lessons have people learned from COVID-19, really? People have gone back to their old ways. Some people showed a bit of compassion on other people during the lockdown. But are they still showing the compassion now? Somebody said the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the body of Christ. Not sickness, not disease. Amen. That's to deal with some theology right there. Verse 7. God is still speaking on the kind of fast that he himself has recommended. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? Is it not to be a blessing to those who are hungry? You see, when you fast, that food that you fasted should be given out. Amen. That breakfast that you skipped, give it out. If you didn't cook it, you can monetize it. What's the value? Give it out to someone who can possibly pay you back. Be a blessing. A thousand naira sometimes is a blessing. It, it means a lot to certain people. A thousand can feed them for a whole day. They know how to ration it. Leave the rest to them. They'll figure it out. And I'm not saying give 1,000 every day. You might not even be able to afford that. But give something. As we start the fast tomorrow, look for something that you can use to be a blessing to someone else. God said when you fast, is it not to deal your bread to the hungry? Not to do exchange for exchange with your rich friends. No, to the hungry. To the hungry. And that you bring the poor that are cast out to your house. When you see the naked, that you cover him. And that you hide not yourself from your own flesh. Be a blessing. That's what that verse is saying. Then, you see what happens afterwards. When you give, when you deal your bread to the hungry. When you bring the outcast into your house. When you are a blessing to someone else in some way, sometimes you might not necessarily be able to accommodate them, but you can contribute to their accommodation. Someone is looking for an apartment, they need 45,000 naira, and you have 5,000 to give. Oh, sister, I heard you're looking for an apartment. Okay, well, there is no vacancy in my house, but I, I want to give you this 5,000 to add to whatever you have. You have helped to, to, to put them uh, under a decent roof. God is saying we need to look in this direction when we fast. So fasting is not just to go hungry all day and have some smelly breath because you are not talking to anybody and you have a long face and you look very spiritual and they greet you and you don't respond. Then you drag yourself to church in the evening and pray. Amen. And you can't wait to get home and devour your mountain of Amala. That's not what fasting is all about. So we need to do this intentionally and do this differently. So that we can get the blessings that come with it. Whether we like it or not, there are inherent blessings that come with fasting and praying. And God is saying, this is the secret. This is it. You've read it before, I know. But did you get what he was saying? Now God said... Then, see when you do all of this, your light shall break forth as the morning. And your health, somebody say your health. Now say my health shall spring forth speedily. Woo! You've been taking medication and that ailment has refused to bulge. It has refused to listen to any medical entreaties. God said when you fast and you deal your bread to the hungry and you support someone that needs help and you be a blessing to someone else, then your light will break forth and then your health will spring forth speedily. Your health will come with speed. I don't care how many years you've had that condition. Your recovery, your recuperation, your sound health will come with speed, saith the Lord. With speed. And your righteousness shall go forth before you. 
The glory of the Lord shall be your reward. Can you see? Righteousness is going before you. And the glory of God is taking care of your backside. So you're covered through and through. Just because you got engaged in fasting and you did it the right way. Not to go on hunger strike. The, let, me, let me say this very quickly. The kind of fast that is right, that is acceptable to God, is the one where you focus on Jesus. Jesus is the focus of the fast. We all have needs. We want to buy cars. We want to change accommodation. We want to pay certain bills and all of that. Don't let that be your focus when you fast. Let Jesus be your focus. Let the word of God be your focus. Let your focus be, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do when I fast. And then God begins to take care of everything that concerns you. Hey, does God know what you need? Do you have to tell him before he gives it to you? Or do you have to inform him that you need it? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, For your heavenly father knoweth that you need all these things. So even before you ask, he knows what you need. But it says, align yourself like this fast we are beginning tomorrow. Lord, I want to know you more. I, I, I want to please you with my life. I'm battling with issues. I'm struggling with certain habits, sinful habits that I can't even share with anybody. Lord, I, I want to know you more because the more of you that I see, the better I become. Now, it is not going to be based on my efforts, but your grace. Because the more I look at you, the more I see you. The more of those things are going to be living my life because you are light. Those things are darkness and your light will drive out the darkness in my life. For with you is the fountain of life and in your light shall we see light. Psalm 36 and verse 9. Can I have an amen to that? And so even all the things you need, you see, you just discover that you didn't pray about certain conditions but they will just disappear. Growth will just disappear from your body. You find, you look for that growth, you can't find it anymore. Some conditions, you won't even remember you had them until about two weeks after. Ah, but I'm not feeling this pain anymore. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody getting something out of this tonight? Your health shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your re, your re reward. Then, you see, again, blessings of fasting. Then shalt thou call. And when you call, the Lord shall answer. May God answer you when you call. Ah, oh, did, you, did you get that? Did you get that? Many people call, but how many are answered? I say, may God answer you when you call. Yeah. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the, the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. Speaking vanity. One of the disciplines of the Christian life is to learn how to speak right. And that's what I, one of the things I, I intend teaching when I tell you about confession. I'm trying to help you to speak right. Many people, like I say, nyan dust. They just don't know how to speak. Up till tonight, there are Christians who call themselves lucky. Up till tonight, there are Christians who say, I'm proud of my pastor. I'm, oh, God is proud of me. No, God will never be proud of you. God will never be proud. So remove of you. God will never be proud. Ah, oh, my feet are killing me, pastor. You don't understand. I have pain in my legs. My, my, my legs are killing me. Killing me softly. Killing me softly. With these words. Because people are in love. And they use all kind of words. Say, man, you, you're killing me softly with your words. Man, I'm, I'm madly in love with you. I love you like mad. You know what I'm saying? You love someone like mad? May you not be mad. People say they're madly in love. Those two guys are madly in love with each other. They are madly in love. Mad. Mad. Can we be properly in love? I know it's not cute. But you see, those negative words are really cute. And they're very attractive. And when you get angry, I'm mad at you. May you not be mad. I said, may you not be mad. It's not funny. Speaking vanity. One of the disciplines that we must learn also 
is what I call the vocabulary of silence. There are times when silence is golden. There are times when you just keep quiet. Don't say what God didn't say. 2021, I see the Lord. I, I, I see you. I, I prayed for someone yesterday. It was his birthday. And the line dropped off as I was praying. I called back to continue my prayer. He, he interrupted the prayer. And said, as you were praying for me, said the Lord showed me. Now hear the word. The Lord showed me a car is coming for you. That car is red. No, that car has red as part of it. Now you need to change the color. That's weird. If God is sending me a red car, that's cute. Why do I have to change the color? You see how people manipulate people? But I can't, I can't be manipulated. I'm sorry, not now. And God knows I don't ever in my life like changing the color of a car. If it comes white, let us use it until the white turns white. <laughs> and we give it out or something. And we won't have to use it to that point anymore before we give it out. Can I have an amen to that? You see? All sorts. Anyway. Speaking vanity. Don't speak vanity. If God didn't say anything, keep quiet. Do you know in Mark 11, Jesus went from Bethany to Jerusalem. He went to the temple. And the Bible says he went when he looked about upon all things. And in the evening, he left. It was not recorded that he said a word. He just came to the temple. And when he had looked about upon all things, he left. Because Jesus made it clear in John 14, 10. He said, then the B part of it, the words I speak unto you, they are not mine. I don't speak of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. What does that mean? The Father gives me what to say, and as I say it, the Father goes ahead to honor what he has given me to say. The Father honors his word. So, I don't say anything unless I've heard. When you are fasting, one of the disciplines you learn is to not speak vanity. Somebody's yearning dust around you, just keep quiet or walk away. Amen? And it's not time for jive talking. Anyway, when you're fasting, your flesh is humble. You don't have much energy to argue. All of you Chelsea and Arsenal fans that beat each other and beat each other up and talk nonsense. You know, you waste your energy. I don't watch football, and I'm not sorry. I've never missed it. Southampton versus Wolverhampton, glory be to God. Those of you who are watching them, how much have they credited your account with? They don't even know you exist. Football is a religion in Nigeria. I don't have anything against it. If I catch my family watching, I can sit down, watch a couple of minutes before I go do something else. Before they get me bored. Praise God. Let me get this done quickly so I can give you a few points tonight to go with. Verse 10. And if thou, you see God again is placing emphasis on giving. Emphasis on giving. He said, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry. You know God said this earlier. In verse 6, verse 7. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And again in verse 10. If you draw out your soul. Your soul. So this goes beyond your bread. Think about the hungry. Be intentional in being a blessing to someone that is hungry. If you draw out your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall your light rise in obscurity and your darkness be as the noonday. May your darkness be as the noonday. Amen. Do you know the noonday? The noonday is 12 noon. May your darkness henceforth be as dark as 12 noon. If you understand that, you say better amen. You know what that means? There will be no more darkness in your life. You will just know what to do. When things happen, you pray in the spirit. Lord, what's your wisdom for this? James 1.5 says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally to all men and he shall give it to him. Lord, I need to know your wisdom for this situation. What do you want me to do? 
Membro Hosea, Vrahale Monam Hosea. Now, because you are a practitioner of what is happening here, the Lord said your light will rise out of obscurity. Out of obscurity, your light will rise. Even you will stop operating in obscurity. God will give you a platform. God will cause men to recommend you. He will bring recommenders your way. They will recommend your brand. What you do, you become an apostle in the marketplace. Whether you are in law or accounting or medicine or IT or graphics designing, whatever you do, God will cause your light to rise out of obscurity. Somebody will notice your work and say, get me that guy. If you draw your soul to the hungry, in the body of Christ today, many people are selfish. Too many Christians are selfish and self-centered. We don't think about other people. I mean myself and my cat. I mean myself and my dog. People have food in their homes, in their stores that are wasting away, rotting and expiring. Whereas there are people in the same body of Christ who don't even have a cup of rice. And they say, well, I only give when the Spirit of the Lord leads me to do that. You already have more than enough leading to do it. Do it, baby. It's right here. It's right. Do you know if you follow even the written word of God, you can never go wrong? I know we place a lot of emphasis on the rhema word, but do you know that even the logos will not get you wrong? Because even the rhema word must be in agreement with the logos. Well... I need to wait on a specific word from God before I know whether to give, 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 give food to the hungry or not. I don't do, I'm like Jesus, I don't do anything unless I see my father do it. John 5, 19. Well, this is the written word. If you draw out your soul to the hungry, if you have compassion, if you even just think about them and begin to say, what can I do? You might not have it in the immediate, but put it as, a, as part of your plan. Money comes into your hand. First, you pay your tithe to God. So that goes to your church account. Second, Lord, what do we do with the rest? It's your money. What do you want us to do with it? No? How many people ask God that? <laughs> Gucci, Gucci. I've gone to price it. Here is the money. Hey, let's mature beyond that. Let me tell you something. If you trust God, you will get to a certain level of blessing. But if God can trust you, child, you are made forever. If, if you can get to the point where God can say concerning you like he testified about Abraham, I, for I know Abraham, for I know him, he will command his children and his household after him to obey and to do the commandments of God. If God can trust you with money, one million comes, boom. Thank you, Lord. What I owe God is the type. <laughs> And even that one, you are doing it religiously. Not as an act of faith and worship. Not as an act of love. You just throw that. Brrr. You say, I should give. I've given no. <laughs> Let the rest make sense. Of. <laughs> no. Worship. On your knees. On my knees is where I pay my tithe. On my knees. Not in church. On my knees. At home. In my office. Before I come to do the physical act in the church. And then God, what, are you, what, are you, what do you want us to do with the rest? And if you will be sincere, there are times that God will tell you the rest doesn't belong to you. Take it down to so-so and so person. It belongs to them. And I tell you, you take it to them in obedience to God. And those people will receive the envelope from you. And before you leave, they break down in your presence in tears. Because for three weeks, they've been fasting and praying, asking God for that specific amount. And God used you now to bring that specific amount. Tell me what will happen to their faith in God. Talk to me, church. What, what will happen to their faith in God? They will move from faith to faith. They will know that you can ask God for a specific amount and God can send it to you. Is that, is, is, is that, not, is that not what's going to happen? Then what will happen to you? Knowing that God has used you as an answer to a family's prayer, what do you think will happen in your spirit? Joy. God, you used me to put a smile on the faces of a family with 20,000 naira? You burst into tears, tears of joy. And God says, 
We're coming up to the next level now. We're coming up to the next level now. Now God is beginning to trust you. Do you know God cannot even trust some people with church money? They collect offering. And before it is given to the treasury. Now, it doesn't happen in this church, in the youth church. Don't get it wrong. But I've been around for a while, so I can tell. In some churches, the, some of the ushers steal money. Especially in these mega churches where they have a lot of money. Millions, you know, per service. I was told of a man who built a block of six flats. He had no job, but he built a block of six flats because he was head usher in his church. The church wasn't giving him money based on that. He was stealing from the church. I've heard of people who already know certain people in the church who usually give forex. They give British pounds or they give dollars and they give in, in I mean, good amount. And I'm talking about Lagos. I don't know about the bad one, but Lagos churches, you know, where they give, I mean, I mean they count dollars like in a service, you could get up to 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 dollars. And those envelopes are targeted. And they never get to the church account. Tell me how God can trust such a person. No, God will not even bless them. Because you see, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the thief. And it will enter and eat up everything including the wood and the stones. Zechariah chapter 5 tells us that. Clearly. So while some are stealing from the church, some are looking at how to bless the church. God gives you an instruction and you obey. Look, it might not be 20,000 naira. It might be your meal. It might be your meal tonight. I've been in my office before. I'm not showing you myself like I'm perfect and I always get it right. No, I don't always get it right. I want to always get it right. And God knows that's my desire. There was a day I brought food, good food, from home and I was going to eat. And in my spirit, I didn't hear an audible voice. My son, my son, thou shalt not eat that food. No, 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 no. Some people say God speaks in King James Version. I don't know. I never had God in King James English. But there was a witness in my spirit. Something withholding me to not eat that food. And I've learned not to argue with God. So I left it. It was there. About 1 p.m., a young man walked into my office, a member of the church. He was then in my protocol. He was a copper in this town. Finished service, loved the church, stayed back. They didn't go back to where he came from. And he walked into my office, Pastor, you know, I got these issues in my life and this and that. Things were not moving. And he was already going back to smoking because, you know, he was getting frustrated and all of that. I said, no, 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 you can't do that. You are born again. You're a child of God. Led him in a prayer of rededication. And I asked him, have you had anything today? He said, Pastor, <laughs> even yesterday was just water I drank. I had some, I had Gary in the morning. Nothing in the afternoon, nothing in the night. I was just drinking water. And so what are you going to eat today? Well, I don't know because, I mean, <laughs> no money, no food. In my spirit, I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. So I said, you see that cooler over there? That's your food. When the young, I said, eat it. That's your food. He got, he got the food. He opened it, saw a chicken lap, <laughs> saw some army of plantains on the rice and everything. And the way it was arranged and there was boiled egg. The young man brought the food to the ark ate half of it and left the remaining half for me. <laughs> I said, no, man, the whole food is for you. That's your breakfast. The Lord actually withheld me from eating it because he knew you were coming. I didn't know you were coming. We didn't have any appointment. He just came, knocked on my door, and then boom, we started talking and gave him some extra money so that he could take care of himself for a couple of days. I mean, how joyful I was that day. My hunger left me. Have you ever experienced joy of the Holy Spirit? Anybody here? That hunger will disappear. Not just when you get credit a lot. I know when you get credit a lot, hunger temporarily disappears. But after some 35 minutes, then you now remember that, ah, there was this restaurant, no, oh, that you've been dreaming to, to, to taste their food. And then you now go, there. no, that's not what I'm talking about. The joy of the Holy Ghost that all day, you almost don't want to eat anything because you're full of the joy of the Lord. That was what filled my spirit that day. That I could be a blessing to someone else. God is singing, draw out your soul to the hungry. Think about them when you fast. When you fast, just thinking about how to be a blessing to people will fill you with enough joy. And what does joy do? 
joy strengthens you. So when you are fasting and you are too weak to smile, you are too weak to be a blessing, you are too weak to minister, you are, you are, you, you're wearing a long face and dry and smelling, it means you are getting engaged on hunger strike and not in fasting God's way. Because fasting God's way, I know that your physical energy will get to a point where it is a little bit depleted, but the joy of the Lord will keep you going. Because according to Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And like Peter, and like Paul the apostle said, even though your outward man perishes, your inward man is being renewed day by day. Because your joy is from within. So you just go on fasting and praising God. Amen. You just go on fasting and praising God. You just go, I mean, because today you put a smile on someone's face. That's joy and that's strength. That's energy. Divine. If you will draw out your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall your light arise out of obscurity and your darkness shall be as the noonday. Amen. Amen. Verse 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. I love this. And satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. Yea, you will be like springs of waters, whose waters fail not. May your waters never fail. Listen, I said may your waters never fail. You keep flowing, the anointing keeps flowing. Water represents the anointing in certain places in the scripture. And the man got into the river and it was, at the, it was at the knee level and then he got again into it and he measured it and it was at the ankle level. Oh, sorry, the ankle first of all, then the knee, then the loin, then it became a, a river to swim in. Levels of anointing. And he that believeth in me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, anointing. There is an outbreak, there is a fresh release of the anointing of the Holy Spirit when we fast properly, properly, not when we get engaged in hunger strike. The Lord shall guide thee continually. You want to board a vehicle and the Lord says, no, you don't board that, wait for the next one to come. Because God knows those guys there are assassins. God knows those guys are ritualists. One of our brothers was sharing with me his testimony today he was kidnapped. I got a call from Favor. Was it, was it yesterday, Favor? Or two days ago? Two days ago. I got a call that one of our brothers was kidnapped. He went home after the Thanksgiving service we had in December. Went home to Joss to see his dad. And then had to travel from Joss to Abuja to catch a flight. And he was in Abuja. He had, he had missed his flight. And he was very hungry because the next flight was scheduled to be 7 p.m. And he was in Abuja already at about 12 noon, thereabout. He said, okay, let me go and get something to eat. So he went to a KFC. And KFC had only fried chicken and all the fries and all of that. But he wanted rice. And then they gave him some little rice. He said, I didn't like this rice. He wanted some good food. So he got out of the place, took the chicken, got out of the place, and then signaled on a, on a cab, a waiting cab, you know, to take him to a place where he could get some good food to eat. And that was it. The cab picked up another man. And he was like, ah, look, this is supposed to be chartered. Why are you? Oh, they exchanged greetings like, you know, maybe he was just trying to help a friend, you know, giving a friend a ride. The next thing you knew, the guy brought out a pistol. He said, hey, see, you talk, I pull the trigger, so cooperate. And that was it. And that was it. But thank God, thank God, God rescued him. The mercy of God showed up for him. He's back home, back in church now, to the glory of God. Can I have an amen? amen. One of the things you need in Nigeria is discernment. One of the things you need, I don't know about any other country of the world, but in Nigeria today, as it is, under this, mm, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Whatever you need, I mean, what you need right now, right now, as you are stepping out of your house, this, this, I don't know any safe neighborhood anywhere except where the Lord's presence dwells. And so that's why you need to also cultivate the presence of God in your house and on your street. So when they do nonsense around, they don't come to your house. Some of these taxi drivers are not taxi drivers. I've had stories upon stories of someone coming just from UI to Mokola. End of, end of discussion. They end up somewhere in the interior part of Ibadan. Just from Awulawa, a red junction to Bodija, Ojuri. Psst, story. When you fast, 
and you pray in the Holy Ghost, your spiritual antenna is sharpened. And one of the things that fasting helps you to do is to sharpen your edge, to sharpen your spiritual antenna. You are able to pick things. You are able to pick, pick, pick from the realm of the spirit. Some people also come into your life as friends, but they are frenemies. The Holy Spirit helps you to discern. They're getting your number. They're getting your IG handle. They do, they're doing like they want to do business with you. They're doing like they, they want some kind of collaboration. They do, they're doing like they're, they're harmless. They just want to, you know, be your friend. But they, they want to rape you. Some don't want to rape you. They want to rip you. Rip you of everything that you've got. Some really want to harm you. Some want to bring you down. Bring down the light of God in your spirit. So the Holy Spirit helps you to discern. Where do I put this one? This one that is rushing me. I've always told you, people rush you sometimes. They just rush you. And if you are rushed like that, before you know it, you have landed in bed with them. In the name of a relationship, two weeks, you've had sex twice. I spoke with some young people some time ago. They met in church. In no time, under two weeks, they were already having sex. So the young man pulled out. So I found out about the relationship. I said, hey, what's up? You guys, what's going on? I mean, yeah. The girl opened up as usual. The lady will open up. The man will act like nothing happened. So I asked him, and because he's my guy, he dropped his head. I'm sorry, sir. It's true, sir. What? I feel like. So who rushed you? But I found out later. You don't need that detail. I'm warning you. Don't think you're some superhero. Superman. You know how many hours I pray in the Holy Ghost? I can't fall. Eh, really. That qualifies you for a fall. Paul the Apostle said, He that thinketh he stands, take it, lest you fall. Take heed. He didn't even say he that stands it. He said, He that thinketh he stands. Assume assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. Let's go on quickly. I need to finish this up and then we go. The Lord will guide you continually. I pray for you. In fact, above my prayers this year for every other thing, I'm praying for this church. I'm praying for you all that God will guide you. That you will enjoy divine guidance. You will know where to put your money, where not to put your money. You will know who to associate with, who not to associate with. You will know where to go and where not to go. And even where to go, you know the time to go there. In the name of Jesus. Because those who are led by God are fed by God. Those who are led by God are kept by God. Deuteronomy 32. God said, I found Jacob in a howling desert. I found him alone and I did lead him and I fed him. Fed him with fat. Kept him. As the mother eagle keeps her young. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Remember God gave us this word on Sunday. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn thy foot from thy, from, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable and shall honor him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Can you see that? Don't be talking nonsense. Your mouth is important. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause you, not you will make it yourself, I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth. Can I have an amen? amen. High places, that's where we are going this year. North is enough with mediocrity and low places, dealing with low people. No, no. God said, I will cause you to ride. You don't know how to, but I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth. The high places. The high places. I pray for someone here tonight. Those high places, God will cause you to ride there. Those high places that you desire, God will cause you to ride there. This year in the name of Jesus. Not everybody believes that. But it's unto everyone according to their faith. Some people, that is too elementary for them. 
and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now, I broke this down. The power of fasting and prayer into about just three, four, five points. This is about three minutes to seven. Let me run through. I want to make certain points and I want you to listen very carefully. In case somebody is still thinking that fasting is not meant for them. Number one, Jesus himself, our perfect example, fasted and he prayed. In Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4, there was an account of the 40 days fasting and prayer of Jesus. Now, in Matthew chapter 6 verses 5 and 6, Jesus said, and thou, when thou prayest. He didn't say if you pray. He says when you pray. So praying for a Christian is an issue of when, not an issue of if. In verse 16 and 17 and 18 of the same Matthew chapter 6, he says, and you, when you fast, don't be like the hypocrites. He says when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites and the Pharisees. They go to the corner of the street and they are shouting and praying and praying. Stop making noise. No, he said, don't be like them. Go into your closet and pray. Then when you fast, he said, don't be like them. They ring a bell. I'm fasting. I'm fasting. Don't greet me. Don't you know we're fasting in our church? It's the time to greet somebody. Jesus said, don't do that. Anoint your face. Don't appear to men like you're fasting. Wear some perfumes. Dress well. Make your hair. Making your hair does not affect your fasting. Can I have an amen to that? Amen. Brother, comb your hair. Comb it well. It doesn't affect your fasting. Look good. And when you fast, you have to be very spiritual. You have to wear some dirty clothes, faded shirt, because everything must be fasting. No. No. Jesus said, don't appear to men like you're fasting. Don't let them be able to tell. Don't let people look at it and say, mm, I know what is doing you. I rang You are fasting your church. Abby. Uh, you know, it's just that today the body is just, the flesh is kind of. He said, if you do that, you've got your reward. Jesus fasted. Please go to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews 5, verses 5 to 10. In verse 7, the Bible talks about in the days of his flesh. The things that Jesus engaged in in the days of his flesh. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. But he said unto him, thou art my son. Today have I begotten thee as he saith. Also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Who in the days of his flesh, talking about Jesus. When he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying. Jesus prayed this way, with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. You see, he fasted, he prayed, he was heard. Number one blessing of fasting, if you are writing right, is for you to be heard on high. For your voice to be heard on high. Jesus was heard on high. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all men that obey him. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, he fasted. He prayed. Number two, the apostles the apostles also accomplished most of their tasks on the platform of fasting and praying. Acts chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. As a matter of fact, 1 to 10. The Bible was talking about then the number of, in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the, the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. In the distribution of food to the widows. There was a murmuring between the Greeks and the Hebrews. So they, they were saying, you are neglecting our widows. How come? You are, you are distributing palliatives. You are only giving to APC. You are not giving PDP. In the church. What's the meaning of that? And there was rancor. 
And the disciples were multiplying. The church was growing. You know, the, the, the bigger the head, the bigger the headache. Then the apostles said, mm, 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 mm. we don't need to be distracted. We shouldn't be distracted. So let's make the main thing the main thing. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and, and said to them, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Let the people, in, let there be some people in the Martha's ministry section of the church who will take care of administering the food, the palliatives to those who need them. We are apostles, we are disciples, we must never neglect the word of God. We must never neglect the ministry of the word and prayer. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among, seven, among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost uh -huh, and wisdom. Whom we may appoint over this business. Yes. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer. We will give ourselves. You appoint men. Seven of them. Full of the wisdom of God. Full of the Holy Ghost. We will give ourselves. While you are doing the appointing. We will give ourselves to prayer continually. And to the ministry of the world. So that that does not suffer. A church that does not pay attention to the ministry of the world and to prayer will soon die. Many churches are dead in Nigeria today. They are nothing but motivational centers. Orators have replaced oracles. If any man speak, let him speak as oracles of God. If any man ministers, let him minister according to the grace that is given to him. Motivational speaking gets to your head. Only the word of God gets to your heart. Only the word of God brings true change in the lives of people. But people would, they can hardly endure sound doctrine these days. Set up a church, put AC, put nice musicians who play in the club. They don't have to be born again. Just bring the musician. They, they are club boys. Bring them. They can play well. Maybe they can even play better than the ones in the church. Set up everything. Let your convenience be on point. Have a church bus. AC. Have a snacks corner. That's all. You have set up a business enterprise. Run four services. Every service one hour. Pa, pa, pa. Maybe even 45 minutes. Just give them some. You don't need to go deep into the world. No, no, no. Just some quotable quotes. Just the way you dress, the way you be addressed. If you cannot lower the mountain, elevate yourself. Because you see, attitude, your attitude will determine your altitude. Attitude is everything. Attitude is everything. One scripture. That's it. <laughs> when they face real issues in the midnight. Your attitude is your attitude. You have to do that. You have to do. And I mean, people face real issues. Midnight sometimes. Pastor, pray for me. One boy, a member of our church, was slapped in the dream. He woke up with pain in one part of his face. When he came, I, I didn't come early to church that day. It was a Saturday. Friday night, so Saturday morning. They called me in the midnight. Pastor, please pray. Pastor, please. I said, What happened? He said, The boy has been slapped in the dream. So I said, come and see me in the office. When he came to see me in the office, afternoon the next day, he was still holding that part of his face. I said, release this up. Pastor, it's very heavy. Slapped in the dream. Who told you that the, the realm of the spirit is not real? Who told you? Uh! But Jesus is Lord. I learned the story of a man who traveled to America. He got to the point of the port of entry. He was deported. For some reason, when he got back home, he found one of his shoes on top of the cupboard, one in the bag. What happened? How did he get here? I've had stories upon stories of people having their passports disappear. Senior pastor shared one with us. He came from Germany one time. From our church in Germany. He said he went to pray for a man. The man will sit down in his room like this. And his fridge will open. And close. Boom. <laughs> like African magic. Fridge will open. And close. Boom. <laughs> when things like that happen. People say. Ah. When your door is open. And it's not a matan. This is not a matan. Even if a matan wants to open your door, it will open it gently. It will seize you. But open. And then, oh! Eh? 
you're the only one in the house. <laughs> to even go out through that door becomes a problem. <laughs> Kill it. One of our brothers in this church also, two weeks ago, I think less than two weeks ago, sent me a voice note. He said, Pastor, I have a testimony. No, he came to me. He said he wanted to share. I said, I didn't have time. I said, whatever you want to tell me, send it via WhatsApp. You have my number. Then he sent a voice. He said, Pastor, it's a testimony. I said, send it through a voice note. So he sent me the voice note. He said, as I was sleeping in my room, I just felt that somebody walked in. He said, by the time I looked up, the man was tall. He said, his head was touching the roof. He actually came to strangle me. He said, I cried, in the name of Jesus. He said, the only thing I remembered was that pastor told us, the kingdom of God is within me. The kingdom of God is within me. The king- <laughs> I said, so, did he strangle you? He said, ah, he couldn't strangle me. He said, but I ran out of the room. <laughs> he said, I went to my mom's room, and I couldn't go back to sleep. I said, ah, you allowed fear. We live in a very spiritual world. Don't, don't get it twisted. Even overseas, people do voodoo. White people, many of them are fetish. But the people that do know their God, it's one of the things we do when we fast. You are taking root downward. Bracotoria. This is the best time of the year for me. This time of fasting is actually the beginning of the year. My year begins after the fast. All this one that we have done from January 1st to now, we played. Now we are fasting. Our head will be correct. Our spirit will be sharp. Now we write down the vision. Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 2 and 3. So that we make it plain upon the tables. So that whoever reads it can run with it. And we know that the vision will speak. Even though it tarries, we shall wait. Because it shall surely come. And if it tarries, we will still wait. No, ni. I'll wait. No, ni. And it will come. And we will surely not tarry. Because at the end, the vision will speak. Today we have many Christians who are lackadaisical. They don't like to be stressed. Fasting. Let's just do it till about 11.35 or 12 max. You will remain a baby for life. A babya. You know babya? The apostles fasted. You know what happened as a result of their fasting in that chapter 6 of Acts of the Apostles? They selected Philip and other people. They laid hands on them. They laid hands on them. Stephen, I think it was. And then, can, we, can you give me verse 7? Give me verse 7, please. Let me be sure of the name. Verse 7. Verse 7. Okay, give me verse 6. Give me verse 6. Give me verse 5. And the same place, the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen. Uh Stephen. A man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. And that man began to do exploits. By verse 15, when they took him to a place where they accused him, the Bible says his face looked like that of an angel. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. That started on the platform of fasting. When they had fasted and prayed. In Acts chapter 13 also, they fasted and they prayed. And as they ministered to the Lord, Acts 13 verses 1 to 3, as they ministered to the Lord, the Holy Ghost said, the Holy Ghost spoke, separate unto me, Paul, Saul, and Barnabas, to the ministry that I've called them unto. I have work for them. So when God is sending anybody out on a mission, let it be on the platform of fasting and prayer. Jesus fasted and prayed before he entered into his ministry. Music ministers, when you also begin to fast, your ministry will go to another level. They've told you you are leading worship on Sunday. Don't take it casually. I already know the songs. I know the combination. I know what pastor likes and what he doesn't like. It's not about what pastor likes, it's what the Holy Ghost likes. Commune with him, commune with him. Yeah, be submissive to authority, but commune with him. And separate yourself. Not that you're watching Instagram all the way to church. Your daddy is driving. You're watching from video, stupid videos and you're coming to minister. You're full of carnality already. There won't be any difference. Separate yourself. The great preachers will not tell you this. They will tell you that's all works, that's performance. That's performance. That's why they have no results. No result or argument. Argument me. What good? We are talking about raw demonstration of the power of God. In this church, we have had three sessions of praise worship. Supernatural. And the pastor could not preach. I, the pastor, could not preach. Because the Holy Ghost took over. One song. There is power in the name of Jesus and the Holy Ghost came. He came to service in a special way that day. 
We were in a meeting recently and the senior pastor was asking us to share. I kept quiet. I shared it with him privately before. I kept quiet in the midst of the other people. Because it will be self-glorification. So you want us to know that in your church, the Holy Ghost is moving, it's moving. Mm. I kept quiet. So Holy Ghost, you know. It was you. You moved and we saw results. I say it till tomorrow. Yejide's travel to Canada was bathed on one of those sessions. Nobody knew she was processing a Canadian visa. Nobody. I, I didn't even know. And she had got to a point where that thing had reached a halt. That morning they took the song here. Hill song. Find hope when all the world seems lost. I felt the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I told the choir, I said, repeat that song. Repeat that line. Find hope when all the world seems lost. I had him say to me, pray for those who have come to the end of their tethers. I came out that day. Before I got to her, she was sitting on this spot, on the floor. She sat here crying. I saw tears. I saw, I saw phlegm. Everything mixed together. Running nose, running eyes, running mouth. She messed up her makeup that morning. I knew something was going to happen. Laid hands on her, prayed for her. Boom! Three months after, she just sent me pictures of her visa. She said, Pastor, when you were saying on Sunday that some of us, the next time we see, we'll be in Toronto. He said, you were talking to me. She left this country in a hurry. I've seen people in this church travel in a hurry. Travel in a hurry. Now, some things I share with you, when I get to other platforms, I pipe it low. So that nobody thinks he's trying to glorify himself. No, I'm telling you that the Holy Ghost is here, walking. But we need to adjust ourselves. I need to adjust myself too. To not get in the way. Because you see, all those three services I could have preached. The spirit of this prophet is subject to the prophet. I could have gone ahead to say, I have a message for today. And I must preach it. And I would have cut out the work of the spirit. Let's be careful. Don't put God in a corner. Take the limits off of him. Don't make him a routine God that this is the way he does these things. No, he can come another way. There might be wind and God is not in the wind. There might be a storm and God is not in the storm. There might be a thunder and God is not in the thunder. And he comes as a still, small voice. Let's be sensitive to the move of the Spirit this new year. And it shall be well with us. Let me mention the other points and we close. I will just mention them. I wish... Really, I wish I could continue to teach this, but I can't. We have to start fasting tomorrow. But for those who are writing, just write it down quick, quick, quick. So the apostles fasted and all of that. I wish I could show you how Apostle Paul himself fasted. Those who are, who are experts in the Pauline epistles and who don't fast. Now, Apostle Paul himself, write this one down. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 to 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 22 to 27. You will find him say, in fastings. In another place, he said, in fastings often. So Paul fasted often. He didn't just fast, he fasted often. What are the benefits of fasting? Number one, your voice will be heard on high. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 4, write it down. When a man denies himself a pleasure to see God's face, God will look in your direction. Isaiah 66 verses 1 and 2. And verse 5, Isaiah 66, verse 1 and 2 and 5, God said to this man, will I look to the one, verse 2, to the one that trembles at my word. He said, I will look at you. May God look at you this season. I said, may God look at you. You see, when God looks at you, it is called God lifting up the lighting of, uh, sorry, lifting up the light of his countenance upon you. And now does God lift up the light of his countenance upon you? The original Hebrew says, he will lift you like a toddler and look. God will look up like this. He will lift up the light of his countenance. Ah, how we love kids. How we love babies. How we love toddlers. Those of us that love toddlers. When they run to us, we carry them up. We don't keep them at our level. We raise them up. We look at them. How cute. How beautiful. Can you imagine God looking at you like that every day? What, where is the room for depression? When you fast, he will look in your direction. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession. So be careful what you say during this fast. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. We, we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Amen. And that same high priest says, we should come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the hour of need. So when you fast, you are connected on high. You may not be connected in Abuja. Senior pastor shared this last night. He blessed me. 
You may not be connected in the White House. You may not be connected to Buckingham Palace, but you are connected on high. I don't know anybody in Asso Rock, but I know the Rock of Ages. <laughs> Can I have an amen? Connected on high. When you fast, your voice will be heard on high. May your voice be heard on high. Number two, yokes are destroyed. As a fresh anointing is released, yokes are destroyed. A fresh anointing is released. Isaiah 58 and verse 6. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. 10 27 says, and in that day, his yoke will be taken away from your neck and his burden from your shoulders and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And when you fast, a new anointing is released when you fast well. A new anointing, a fresh anointing is released. And what is it for? To destroy yokes. 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose the Son of God made manifested even to destroy the works of the devil. Not to manage it, not to, not to, not, 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 not to, not to uh, pamper it, but to destroy it. Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to proclaim the liberty for the captives, to proclaim the, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set captives free. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. We saw an account in Matthew 15, verses 29 to 31. Different categories of people came to Jesus. The maimed was one of them. The blind, the halt, the mute, the deaf, the lame, the, 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 the maimed, M-A-I-M-E-D. Those who lost their body parts. And the Bible says they were all healed and the maimed were made whole. Whatever is lacking in your life, as you engage in this fasting from tomorrow, God will make your life whole. Yeah. Whatever is missing in your life, God will find the missing rib and put it back in your body in the name of Jesus. Yeah. If there's a physical body part that needs to grow, God will cause it to grow. Yeah. And whatever needs to wither, God will cause it to wither. Had a growth at the back of my head, 2017. The Lord healed me, 2018. Started from 2016. Let's be careful. Because one of the things that the devil will do is to set you up in strife. And some people come into your life, all they have come to do is to stir up strife. They are needed because without them we won't grow. But be careful. The Lord said to me, wait before me the next two days. I had returned from America. I got into strife with some people who lied against me. In fact, I promised the family in America, when, when next I come to this country, I'm not coming to your house. I promised them before I left. Pastor Fred, why? I said, I'm not coming to your house again. I got that angry. And these were people I'd taken communion with. <laughs> A year after, the growth appeared here at the back of my head and it was growing bigger. God, what is going on? I rebuked it. I did all the healing scriptures. Nothing, nothing worked. But the day the Lord brought it up to my spirit, you had communion with them. Do you know me of communion? Do you know me of communion? Communion is covenant. Covenant meal. Eh? Lord, what do I do now? Forgive them. Ah! What they did was that. Forgive them. It wasn't really their fault. It was what they were fed with. They acted based on what they were fed with. They love you. You know it. Ah! Okay, Lord, I forgive them. I release them. Lord, I pray for them. Let it be well with them. What about the one that caused it here? To hell? He said, no, you can't say that. <laughs> the spirit you have is the spirit of love. Forgive. And when you stand praying, forgive. Mark eleven twenty five. 25. So I forgive. God is very hard. Oh, it's very hard. Forgive. Ah, forgive. So I went to preach in a church in Aja, Redeemed Christian Church of God. On my way back to my hotel, Minister like house on fire that night. Oh, fire of God was all over that building. One grandma came and knelt down before me and said, pray for me. I said, no, grandma, stand up. I can't, you won't be kneeling. She said, she insisted until the pastor begged me and I was ashamed of myself. I said, ah. an old woman like this. She said, no, that's what she wants. So pray for her. And I did. And I, as I was leaving from my hotel room, the Lord said to me, I believe the Lord was pleased with my ministration that night. The Lord said to me, Wait before me, when you get back to Ibadan, wait before me the next two days. Day one, as I was praying, 
He had warned me before in my place of prayer. Stop putting your hand on that thing to measure the growth. It's affecting your faith. Forget about it. But that money is said to me, now touch it. I said, eh, eh. So I touched it. As I touched it, I felt something sticky. He said, touch it more. I touched it more. This smell is bad, though. <laughs> that was the end of the affliction. In the place of fasting, let it also be a place where you release, you forgive. See, we, let's be honest. We can't be cozy with everybody in life. There are certain people after some time you find out you can't cope with them again. Give them room for your space, for your, for your health. Don't hold grudges. Love them. But you, you, you might never be cozy again. Because people choose their way. You see, when, you, when evil becomes your choice, I won't be part of that evil. There's a particular person that was very close to me in my life. The Holy Ghost warned me three years ago. Oh yeah, cut off that relationship. I couldn't cut it off. Ah, God. He's, he's a correct person. <laughs> when I saw the light, recently I was even trying to mend it again. I said, whatever... When God has broken something and you are trying to mend it, I say, I'm sorry, sir. I say, you better be. Peace. To maintain my sanity and to maintain the flow. Until Lot left Abraham. Abraham did not hear again from God. The year Lot left and the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, Abraham, lift up your eyes. What do you see? There are some lots in our lives. God didn't call them to go with us. We called them by ourselves. Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. And God called Abraham. The Bible didn't say, and God called Abraham and Lot. He called Abraham. Abraham called Lot. And I behaved like Abraham many, many times. I know, in my life. Even when somebody gives me a business idea, I will be looking for one of my friends that will do it with me. One day, somebody told me, what's wrong with you? If somebody gives you an idea, run it first. I say, hey, can it? Can't boy, yellow, yenny. Say, where is that in the Bible? You don't know the company you keep with. Does that mean what accompanies you? So it was for Abraham and Lot. In as much as you maintain a conscience that is void of offense before God. I'm sure you haven't heard me speak like this before. I'm helping you to be free. Number three. Sound health. Isaiah 58 and verse 8. Your health will spring forth speedily. Number four, which is the last one. And we go home tonight. Divine guidance. And the Lord will guide thee continually. Give me Deuteronomy 32 verses 9 to 14. Deuteronomy 32 verses 9 to 14. You see... Divine guidance is what we need now. In these days of kidnappers, armed robbers, bandits, eh, cattle rustlers. May you always be at the right place at the right time. In the days of internet business, all sorts of fraudulent businesses. Money that people have worked hard to earn. They swipe it off in one day. They say pay for this good. There will be free delivery. No delivery. The Holy Ghost is your check. He will tell you, mm -mm. and when you listen, if you don't do orikoko, orikunku, if you listen, you won't put your money there. Don't go to that party. <laughs> it might save you your life. A young man left church December 31st, some years ago. Happy New Year! He ran out of church. <laughs> One club here in the bottom. That was the end of him. The next day, we went to bury him at Songo Cemetery. We grew up on the same streets. It's not a story I was told. They had waited to finish him there. There was a deal going on. He didn't know. He was supposed to be the beneficiary. But these people didn't want him to get anything out of the money. He didn't know. They called him for a meeting. His eldest brother called him for family meeting. January 1st, family meeting. He said, Mumbo, Mumbo, I'm coming. I'll be with you. He went to that club. They finished him there. Inside the club. Because you don't know what is going on in those places. They are dens. Some of those clubs are dens of evil. Den. The den of lions. It goes beyond the booze. 
and the comedy that you see on the surface. What is going on inside? Psalm 74 verse 20 is what is going on inside. Have respect unto the covenant for the dark places of this world are full of the habitations of cruelty. Most of the major deals that people cut, they cut them in the clubs in the dead of the night. That's why politicians sadly sleep at home because midnight is their meeting time. 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Some of you probably know. You have an idea. <laughs> and you, child of God, I, I'm just accompanying my friend. I'm not doing anything. Just Even if they drink, I will not drink. I just sit down and be watching. It's all right. Proverbs 13, 20. <laughs> he that walketh with the wise shall be wise. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. Why are you a companion of a fool? You follow them to the pub. Follow them to the club. What for? What for? Why don't you be found in the place where his honor dwells? I ask myself when I'm going anywhere, does God's honor dwell in that place? If his honor does not dwell there, I'm not going. If it's a job you want to give me, don't give me. I'm not coming to that place. You shall be guided continually. May God guide you this year. May you listen this year. Because the problem is not God guiding us. The problem is us listening. Some of us, we have put the cotton wool that is loaded with palm oil in our ears. Even in church, we give simple instructions. They will, some people are just full of themselves. They won't do. They won't obey. Simple instructions. As simple as remove that earring. Say, no, why should I remove it? Why should I remove it? Don't go to that place again. Let me get my body. It's all right. I've told some people, break that relationship. It's not right. As far as this church is concerned, if you're not 23, you can't be in a relationship. Is it no? We were just kids when we fell in love. Pastor, it's not my fault. We were just kids and we fell in love. Fell in love? May your head not break as you fall. That's why they, people say they break their heart. They break their head. They break. You can't break my heart, oh. <laughs> Deuteronomy 32 verses 9 to 14 let's go there and then we close tonight hallelujah I'm closing my sermon notes so I will not be tempted to look again in fact Ayo come and get this take it from me take this cup from me let's look at this scripture together in fact let's stand as we look at it together for the lost portion is his people in fact let's read it together one two go for the lost portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in the desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. Read, read, read. He led him about. He did what? He did what? You know as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are who? He led him about. He instructed him. And because Jacob listened to instructions, instructions are different from pieces of advice. To give an instruction is to tell you, hey, Emmanuel, your name is not Queen. Your name is Emmanuel. And you don't answer to Queen anymore. That is an instruction. You get that from a father. A father, sometimes a father may advise, but there's a difference between when a father gives an instruction and when daddy is advising. The challenge with this generation is that we don't care about fathers. We're all mates. So, what is it? God said in Malachi, if I were your father, then where's my honor? If father gives an instruction, you say, sir, yes, sir. Meet me in church at 5 p.m. tomorrow. Sir, yes, sir. You know that? Yes, sir, but it might not be tomorrow, sir. No. It is, sir, yes, sir. Jacob listens to instruction. That's why in the school of aviation, they don't have professors. In aviation school, flight school, no, no professors. They are not needed. They have instructors. In even in music school, where they teach people how to play violin, how to play some of this complex equipment, the professors know the theories. The real instructors, they are the ones who play. And they tell you, pull that string. You say, no, I don't like the string. It's too tiny. How can I pull it? No. Okay, so you're not ready to play for life. 
press that button, the, air, the jet will taxi on the tarmac. No, the button is boring. I like the white button. I don't like the brown button. Then you are grounded for life. Instructions. God gives instructions. May you hear. Amen. And may you obey. Amen. Instructions. Get up. Tonight, between three and four, stay up and pray. Instructions. Instructions. Now, you are going for a job interview. Change that hair. Change it. No, this is what I like to wear. This is me. They can't take me for who I am. All right? Then you are grounded for life. Instructions. Instructions. Pay your tithe. Instructions. This is not subject to debate. When did we start debating with God? Whether to pay or not. When thou prayest, not if you pray. When thou fastest, not if you fast. It is no subject to if. It is a matter of when. That is, do it from time to time. Jacob listened. Guess what happened? What followed the instruction? He kept him. Because he listened, then God was under obligation to keep him. Those who are led by God are kept by God. And he kept him as the apple of his eye. Uh -huh. As an eagle stared up a nest, floret, fluttered over a young, spread it abroad her wings, take them, bearded them on her wings. Uh -huh. So the Lord alone did lead him. Those who are led by God are kept by God. God alone did lead him and there was no strange God with him. No strange God. Money was not his God. Some are chasing money when they should be in church. Money becomes a demigod. Money that we met in this world that we're going to live here. There is no central bank in heaven. Because it is not needed there. The gold people die for here is the kolta of heaven. Kolta. When the floor of this church was made, I was already a member of this church. I knew it cost a lot of money to do this terrazzo. This is not found in heaven. Gold, gold. People keep gold in banks here. In heaven, it's quota. What does that tell you? There are some things that are more important to be treasured. One of them is your service to God. One of them is your presence in the house of God. One of them is your commitment to your fellowshipping with God. It is meant to be treasured. When you are praying, stop picking calls. Don't be stupid. Stop picking calls when you are praying. You treasure that moment. Your destiny depends on it. Not some stinking job that somebody wants to give me. I was preparing for this service this evening. One call came in. It, from that person, I knew it was a job. They were going to give me a job. I said, mm -hmm, I'm, you should know that by now, I should be in church. Things are going to change this year. When we change, things will change. I've told myself, any job clashes with the church service, the job goes. How much is one million you want to pay me? Does that settle me for life? If he even settles me for life, does he settle me for eternity? Do you know the instruction God is going to give you that, that's going to turn you to a multi-billionaire? And there was no strange God with him. May there be no strange gods with you this year. May a relationship, a wrong relationship, may, not, may it not be a God in your life this year. Some people, is what their boyfriend says. Your boyfriend says, no church, then no church. That's a God in your life. See, we have to go to Ventura. Let's go and see a movie. We are not the one that killed Jesus. Jesus is not dead. For your information. I know you didn't go to school. My King Jesus is alive and well. This year, may strange gods live your life. Amen. Some people, their gadget is their God. Gadget. Some, my car, my car, my car. My car, my car, my house. My house, my house. My money, my money, my money has become a God. God said, no strange God was found with Jacob. Go on quick and let's wrap this up. He made him ride on the high places of the earth. <laughs> Did we not read it earlier that God said he will make us ride on the high places of the earth? Did we not read it? Uh -huh. He made him. God is a maker. God will make you this year. Yeah. I said God will make you. That he might eat the increase of the fields. Those who are led by God are fed by God. 
God knows where the grass is green. God knows where the money is. He knows where the food is. He knows where the connection is. And made him to suck honey out of the rock. Only God. You suck honey out of the rock. All your teeth will break. <laughs> but God will cause the rock to open. And honey will flow to you. Do you know what that means? Even the impossible is possible for you. So you can tell the rocks open. You can tell the honey flow. Even the impossible he can tell the visa, come this year. He can tell your legs, straighten up. He can tell your body parts, align. And I see a lot of alignment happening this year. Yeah. And oil out of the flinty rock. That's the impossible happening. Yes. Butter of kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs. Sounds like pepper soup to me. And rams of the breed of Bashan, not any rubbish ram. The ram of the breed of Bashan. Go and read about the goat of Bashan in the Bible. One man to be gone. The rams of the breed of Bashan. And goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. Kidney? Kidneys of wheat. Does anybody feel like eating these things? This is called the best of the best. Reserved for Jacob because he was led by God and he listened. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Not beer. No, no. Pure blood of grape. You know pure blood of grape? The juice. Juice of grape. Grape juice. Pure red grape juice. Pure red grape juice. Not fermented. Pure. Fresh. Farm fresh. That talks about prosperity. But when these things happen, don't forsake God. Go to verse 15. See what Jacob did. But Jeshoron, that's Jacob, waxed fat over to be chop up. London boy. Yankee boy. Hmm? And, and kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. You know some people, they say they are thick. They say you have grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God who made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. May that not be your portion this year. I know people that God has lifted, even from this church. And, and they became too big. Too big to give their tithe here. They found a church of millionaires where they think their contemporaries are. We, we have some open roofs that we have not fixed. They can't cope with a church that doesn't have AC. But this was the place where God had their prayer. I am not a pastor that is asking for tithes. I will even remind you. Hello, I've not seen your tithe. For what? It's between you and God. If only we are really very close. I see you as my son or as my daughter. Then I can say, hey, what's wrong with you? Ah, pastor, uh, sorry, sir, uh, better be. And that's the only time. Don't ever think me, I'll be, I'll be calling you, I'll be reminding you. I've, in over 10 years, I've not been reminded. Over 15 years, I've not been reminded once to pay my tithe. I've not been mistakenly reminded. Yet it has increased. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not ready for pampering Christianity. You know, you know, pampering people because you don't want to offend them so that they will come next time. No, 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 I will offend you. Himself, the word of God is a rock of offense. Have you not read that in the Bible? It's a rock of offense. If you fall upon it, it will break into pieces. If it rolls on you, it will grind into powder. So that our lives can be better. Not to destroy us, but to make us who he wants us to be. Lift your hands tonight and say, Father, I thank you for your word. Blessed be your holy name. Now in the same breath, draw strength tonight for fasting. Draw strength for fasting. Say, Lord, I draw strength for fasting. I draw strength for fasting. From tomorrow, I am fasting. I will fast for 15 days as the church has decreed. I will not miss one day. It will not be by might, but by power. It will not be by might, nor by power, but by your spirit. Holy Spirit, you will help me. Open your mouth and pray. Holy Spirit, you will help me. You will help me. My body will be strong. I will not fall sick. I will not have ulcer. I will not have any nonsense disease. In fact, if there's any sickness in my body, I command it to go now in the name of Jesus. And I will encounter God. And God will encounter me. These 15 days will be days of encounter. Days of heaven and earth. Days of intimacy with God. Decree, decree. Open your mouth and decree. There will be days of intimacy with God. 
There will be days of supernatural encounters. There will be days I will hear from God. I will hear from on high. The vision of my life for this year will be given to me, to be delivered to me clear, explicitly and crystal clear. Thank you, precious Father. Give him thanks now. It's a season of help. I had that in my spirit. I don't know who needs help here tonight. It might not be everybody, but somebody needs help. And this is your season of help. You've never been helped before. You'll be helped now. Yes. You will know what help means because you will be helped. Yes. Thank you, precious Father. I just heard that in my spirit. Just heard that in my spirit. I just heard that in my spirit. Don't calculate where it will come from. Focus on Jesus. For we realize where our help comes from. We realize where our help comes from. Now, our help comes from him. Our help comes from him. Amen? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the sweet communion of the precious Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. Let's give our tithes and offerings very quickly and then I decree the blessing and then we go. Thank you for staying, staying tuned. Those of you that are watching online via YouTube, Facebook Live, MixLR, listening via MixLR, and through our social media handles. God bless you. If you're watching via YouTube, you have the account details of the church on the screen right now. If you're watching via Facebook Live, the account number is 51001619999. And if you're listening via MixLR, it's also 510016. Nine, nine, nine. And the name of the bank is Heritage Bank Limited. What a life ministries, I found the expression out. The Lord bless you as you, you are led to give uh, to his work. Amen. All right, let's quickly bless the Lord with our substance. Please, can I have an offering envelope myself? Oh, no, no. Don't worry, I'll do a transfer. I'll do a transfer. I'll do something good. Amen. So please let's honor the Lord. Give it in faith. Speak a word over it and give it in faith. Ushers, please wait on us. God bless you. God bless you. And if you came to church, you didn't have anything to give, the Lord will bless you. When next you are coming, the Lord would have blessed you multiple folds and you'll have something to give in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, ushers, please wait on us. God bless you. God bless you and keep you Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. God, turn his face towards you and give you peace. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Grant you his peace, peace. Shalom, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking in your life. Now and forevermore, in Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. God bless you. Have a good night. See you on Sunday. No, see you tomorrow. Prayer time is 545 at the ICC. Come fasting. Don't forget. Don't eat breakfast. Come fasting. Prayer time, 545 at the ICC tomorrow and on Saturday and on Sunday till the fast is over.